Many of our transport networks and the technology used by the transport that runs on them is outdated and dangerous for the future of the planet. There are some new technologies emerging that promise to clean up public transport, with one of the main ones being the hydrogen fuel cell, which only has a byproduct of water. This tech has been proven already in cars, public buses, among others. Now, company Stadler has been setting distance records with its new hydrogen train. However, criticisms have started to emerge about the cost, complexity and eco-friendliness of separating and storing hydrogen. So how does the technology work? How is Stadler implementing this in their trains? And what advancements have been made in recent years to make this element a truly green and usable fuel source? In the 1800s, Great Britain spearheaded the development of fully operational passenger railways and similar networks soon appeared all around the globe. Initially, these were run with steam-powered locomotive marvels that relied on colossal amounts of coal or oil to drive them. However, the effects and consequences on the environment that they created were vastly underestimated at the time. It's now thought that steam-powered trains produced a whopping 10 kilograms of carbon dioxide for every mile they travelled. These emissions dealt heavy blows to both the climate and the health of those that worked on and around them. The advent of electric and diesel-powered railways brought about the ultimate demise of steam locomotives in the second half of the 20th century. Electric trains, in particular, demonstrated that progress for cleaner energy to run them was certainly possible. They successfully cut the carbon dioxide cost per mile to around two and a half kilograms and represented a more cost-efficient way of keeping the carriages running. But even these new networks remained driven by the infrastructure of fossil fuels and everything that brings with it. In March of 2024, what could be an incredibly significant world record was set in Colorado in the United States. It involved a hydrogen-powered train traveling a staggering 1,741 miles, running without stopping for 46 hours. The vehicle responsible for this remarkable feat is the Stadler Flirt H2, made by the Swiss rolling stock manufacturer Stadler. And the key to this landmark event is in the hydrogen fuel cells that convert hydrogen and oxygen into electricity to power its high-speed electric traction motors. All this happens on board the train, in real time as it speeds towards its destination. The hydrogen fuel is stored in high-pressure tanks, with any excess energy created during braking stored in batteries for use at a later date in the journey, which further enhances the Stadler's already impressive reduced energy consumption and overall efficiency. Events such as this are adding weight to a growing argument that hydrogen fuel trains may soon be providing the opportunity to turn the entire rail industry on its head, and perhaps make it the greenest form of public transport available to our world. Interestingly, the process used to utilize hydrogen as a viable energy source for fuel isn't new technology. It dates back to 1800 when two English scientists, William Nicholson and Anthony Carlyle, conducted the first recorded electrolysis experiment. They were interested in observing whether passing an electric current through water would induce a chemical reaction. Their theory was correct, and they successfully demonstrated that as water decomposed, it split into hydrogen and oxygen gases. It was a genuinely pioneering discovery that was later implemented by the physicist Sir William Robert Grove as he invented the world's first hydrogen fuel cell. This fundamental understanding paved the way for modern fuel cells that have significantly evolved since then. Making giant leaps on board the spacecraft of NASA's Gemini and Apollo space programs, before becoming commercially applied for portable power in laptops, mobile phones and generators. 
So the question on everybody's lips in recent times is, can hydrogen-powered trains really turn the tracks green and usher in a new age of zero-emission travel and public transport? There are certainly indications that this could be the case. Many of the world's most prestigious rolling stock and train manufacturers are already years into their own development. The Kouradia Island, designed by the French transportation giant Alstom, was first unveiled to the world back in 2016. And just two years later, in 2018, it became the world's first hydrogen-powered passenger train, running a regular commercial service in Germany. This has proved to be a very impressive proving ground for a hydrogen-fueled railway future. So much so that from 2018 to 2022, the Kouradia Island has traveled more than 200,000 kilometers, the equivalent of five times around the world, all powered by this innovative and potentially transformative technology. Fittingly, for developments in railway technology, the United Kingdom is at the forefront of this revolution too. The HydroFlex train project is the result of a collaboration between the University of Birmingham's Centre for Railway Research and Education, their partners at Alstom and the British train manufacturer Porterbrook. One of the reasons the HydroFlex project is gaining so much notice is that it involves adapting existing train stock to fit them with hydrogen fuel capability, which has huge implications for cost savings, infrastructure issues, and presents the ultimate in sustainability and reuse for the thousands of diesel and electric models that currently roll across the tracks all over the world. For Hydroflex, the British Rail Class 319 electric multiple unit passenger train was modified to retrofit the design with hydrogen fuel cells, storage batteries and all of the control and management systems that are required to make these classic commuter carriages into future-proofed pioneers. The project is driven by some serious green credentials. Like most of Europe and the developed world, the UK is keen to work towards decarbonisation and the reduction of harmful gas emissions within a rapid time frame. An ambitious target of reducing carbon emissions by 80% by 2050 in relation to 1990 levels has already been set. Professor Stephen Jarvis, head of the College of Engineering and Physical Sciences at the University of Birmingham, believes that projects such as Hydroflex are integral to making this happen. As with any innovative technology, however, laying the tracks for its successful adoption and rollout is never going to be plain and simple. The challenges facing a complete hydrogen fueled overhaul are complex and wide-ranging. It's easy to be seduced by the promise of zero-emission hydrogen fuel cell application for the future of rail travel, and the data certainly supports the clean and green credentials of the technology in use. But the truth of it all may be a little murkier than at first glance. There are plenty of technical, economic and regulatory obstacles to address first along with some huge questions surrounding the necessary infrastructure required to support it. Investment is a key initial consideration, with the capital costs proving high for hydrogen fuel storage and refueling capability. But it's the actual cost of producing hydrogen fuel itself that remains a major bump in the road. To meet the demands and claims of hydrogen-powered trains means having to produce only green hydrogen. Green hydrogen fuel is created using electrolysis from renewable energy sources, such as solar or wind. This is currently prohibitively expensive at scale, costing much more than the familiar and cheaper fossil fuels. Alternative hydrogen fuel methods do exist that are much cheaper to produce on an industrial scale. These are known as grey or blue hydrogen. Grey hydrogen uses natural gas through a process called steam methane reforming, or SMR. This involves reacting methane with steam to produce hydrogen. Unfortunately, it also produces significant amounts of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide too. Several of the hydrogen-fueled railway projects are using grey hydrogen at the testing and early stages of their development due to the relatively cheaper costs. 
But in the race for a greener network, grey hydrogen will never be able to satisfy the cleaner criteria that it needs to make the shift into bigger investment, wider use and large-scale adoption. The use of blue hydrogen is an interesting step towards cleaner production that remains cheaper as it still uses the SMR method. But it captures and stores around 60 to 90 percent of the dangerous carbon dioxide, which is then taken to secure storage sites and not released into the atmosphere. This modified method adds complexity, and complexity adds cost. With a full refueling infrastructure also required for any proposed hydrogen-fueled railway that would also incur huge amounts of cost, this complexity could be a major stumbling block for blue hydrogen too. And the transformation desired then begins to look further and further down the line. That's why the Stadler Flirt H2 record was so widely celebrated as it may prove decisive in encouraging further investment to drive additional advances in grey hydrogen production and ultimately bring that prohibitive cost down. There are some big legislative and safety concerns here too. Storing and transporting something as highly flammable and potentially dangerous as hydrogen will require stringent regulation and the highest safety standards that may take years to draft, test and pass through before the general public are satisfied and happy to ride on the green trains of the future. Because getting where we need to go in a greener way still needs to be quick, simple and safe to get us all on board just as it did 200 years ago when the railways began. It is clear that hydrogen fuel powered trains present some very encouraging signs in their approach to the challenge of greener energy. They may not yet be the final destination on our journey towards greener and more sustainable public transport and travel, but they are looking more and more like the most important next stop. Let's see where these trains take us. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content. And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.